name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Very good morning and a warm welcome. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So as we prepare to meet with Christ in word and sacrament, we come before the Lord aware of our own failures and shortcomings and seek his forgiveness and healing. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, and nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Do please be seated for our first reading. letter to the Ephesians. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, 
Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the Commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access to one spirit, to, to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together. This is the word of the Lord.
Do please stand. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do please be seated. Last year in October, I think it was, Pope Francis issued a new encyclical, a kind of official letter from the Pope uh, called Fratelli Tutti. Although, actually, I think it's in Latin, so you don't pronounce it. I'd love it if, if you could. Fratelli Tutti, uh, in that kind of Italian accent, which I think in Latin means um, to all the, the brothers and sisters, fratelli is, is, is fraternity. Uh, and Tutti is, is, is everyone. And so it's, a, it's an encyclical on what he calls uh, social friendship, fraternity and social friendship, Fratelli Tutti. Uh, issued, of course, during the pandemic. So part of what he does is reflect on, on, on the pandemic and COVID a little bit and on all sorts of things, globalization, uh, social media, the internet, how that's affecting us nowadays. Uh, nationalism, populism, uh, xenophobia, um, uh, religious violence, religious fundamentalism. And, and after kind of portraying this, this world in which we live in, he, he's arguing for, and interesting he uses this word, a kind of new humanism, a faith-inspired humanism. And he uses that word in the middle of the encyclical. And it's quite interesting to me that he used, talks about humanism, because in our culture nowadays, we think of humanism, or we've come to think of it, as a kind of anti-religious thing. There is the National Humanist Society, I think it's just changed its name, but anyway, it's a kind of, it's a sort of anti-religious campaigning body. I don't think they would call themselves that, but that's sort of what they are about. They are atheists and secularists. But of course, in fact, humanism originally was, was a, a, a term that was used in Christianity, really from, from the Renaissance, this kind of great revival of interest in classical civilization that took place in, in, in Italy, in Florence in the 15th, 16th centuries. They rediscovered Greek philosophers like Plato and translated him into Latin, and they rediscovered uh, kind of the, the, the Greek plays and the art and the culture. And out of that, there was this kind of movement of Renaissance humanism, which was not anti-religious. The whole idea for most of them was that they wanted to integrate that kind of Greek civilization and culture and art and literature and philosophy. They wanted to integrate that with Christian faith. So there's a great text of the Renaissance by 
Pica della Mirandola, I don't know how you pronounce it, anyway, called uh, an oration on the dignity of man. And it's a kind of great text of the Renaissance asserting uh, the kind of the centrality of the human being, the dignity of the human being at the center of creation. And it's unashamedly a religious vision. It's kind of integrated uh, into, uh, into Christianity. And actually, in a way, that kind of picks up what happened in the early church. Our first reading, the letter to the Ephesians today, is all about is Jews and Gentiles coming together in, in one body. The Gentiles at the time were all Greeks or Greek-speaking part of the Hellenistic world. And, and that letter to the Ephesians is all about bringing those two strands together, bringing the Jewish strand, the biblical strand, together with the kind of the Greek strand and, and, and out of that fusing something something new, something more. Some of you will have heard me rant, perhaps is not the right word, but about Martin Luther. I'm not a big fan of Martin Luther at the Reformation. One reason is because he had the slogan, sola scriptura, which means the Bible alone. Uh, and out of that you get kind of religious fundamentalism, it seems to me. I don't think you can accuse Luther of it, but that's where it comes from. But the humanists, the religious humanists at the time of the Reformation wanted a kind of a bigger picture. Yes, they wanted the Bible, but also they wanted the best of pagan philosophy and culture and art and science. And they tried to have a, a kind of bigger picture which brought both of these things together. And the best of the Anglican tradition kind of continues that. There was a magazine from the 18th century, first magazine in English called The Humanist. It was edited by, of course, an Anglican clergyman. Uh, and The Humanist was about bringing a certain amount of religion alongside a bit of science, a bit of art, a bit of the humanities. And it was a kind of holistic vision of, of, of the human being. Kind of all those things which go to make up who we are. And, and when the Pope talks about it, he's kind of picking up that tradition. There was a, a great Catholic philosopher called Jacques Maritain uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, writing during the 1930s, and he was a great advocate of, of, of Christian humanism as, as the kind of the thing we should be looking towards against the other ideologies of the day. He was writing in the 1930s, so you've got Nazism, fascism. Uh, you've got uh, communism, uh, you've got kind of cutthroat capitalism, uh, and in the middle of that he says, no, you know what, we don't want any of those. What we want is a kind of Christian humanism. Uh, and he saw that as the basis for, for human rights and a kind of a livable society. Uh, and Jacques Maritain and the other Catholic philosophers along with him then went on to influence things like the, the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. It's the, this, this conviction that we are made in the image of God and that you need that kind of theological, religious, philosophical underpinning to our vision of what it is to be human if we're going to preserve those traditions. So this kind of tradition of, of, of Christian humanism is trying to avoid religious fundamentalism on the one hand and the kind of radical secularism which will undercut the tradition of human rights. We need this vision of the human being made in the image of God, made for social friendship and community. And that's the vision that Pope Francis sets out in uh, this encyclical, Fratelli Tutti. And so it ends, rather appropriately, with two things. One, it ends by quoting a declaration that he signed with uh, a Muslim imam in Abu Dhabi. So they kind of, you know, they're, they're joint affirmation of what it is to be human and to be made in the image of God. And then with a prayer, and actually, in fact, there are two prayers. One is a overtly Christian prayer, but the other prayer is deliberately, if you like, a universal prayer prayer that can be prayed by people from any faith or religion. It's just called to the creator. 
And that kind of prayer captures this spirit of a, of a, of a faith-based, a religiously inspired humanism uh, as the kind of basis for the future. So I want to finish, therefore, with, with his prayer. A prayer to the Creator, therefore a prayer that all people can pray from whatever religious background. Lord, Father of our human family, you created all human beings equal in dignity. Pour forth into our hearts a fraternal spirit and inspire us a dream of renewed encounter, dialogue, justice, and peace. Move us to create healthier societies and a more dignified world, a world without hunger, poverty, violence, and war. May our hearts be open to all the peoples and nations of the earth. May we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have sown in each of us, and thus forge bonds of unity, common projects, and shared dreams. Amen. We stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the peace of God in the church and in the world. Grant the church the grace to be still and not to lose holiness by being too busy. Give our ministers the grace, like the good shepherd of the sheep, to lead their people through the way of quietness into the presence of their Lord. Lord, in your mercy. The whole world is in this array. Speak through the, its tumults. Calm the strident noise of the powerful and the anxiety of the powerless. You are a compassionate God. So we ask for your compassion on all who wander without direction. Guide them on the path of peace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. grant to us in the pressure of our daily lives the time to be still, to learn the wisdom that comes in silence. Lord, as England is lifting the rest of the COVID-19 restriction from tomorrow, Monday, 19 July, Please help us as individuals 
to do the necessary things to stay safe and continue to guide the decision of our government. God, we say in one accord, please permanently seal the storm of this pandemic in the United Kingdom and in all the nations of the world. We remember those who have been affected by the climate crisis, the recent floods in London, Euro floods in Belgium and Germany, the wildfires that is raging across America, crisis in Lebanon, kidnapping and killing in Nigeria, please still the storm and grant them peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Ephesians 2.14 says, For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When in his body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. Lord, keep the whole world together as one body so that the peace can reign all over and help us to use the leisure time so, they, so that we may have strength to help those whose lives are linked with ours. Lord, in your mercy, it is written, for I will restore health to you and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. So we ask you, Lord, to divinely visit those who are sick and wounded all over the world. We pray particularly for the sick in our community. Sarah Everett, Stephen Krishlow, Linda Rose, Camilla, Alice, Sunni Kapadia, Please lay your healing hands on them and strengthen those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. May our prayers be heard through Christ, the shepherd of the lost. Finally, let's say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do please stand. Christ is our peace. He's reconciled us to God in one body, by his death on the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer each other a nod or a bow by way of a sign of peace. Do please be seated as we prepare the altar and listen to the choir.
Do please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Be Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Set us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As Bola mentioned in the prayers, and as of course you all know, tomorrow is the great unlocking, which means next Sunday we will be singing, all of us, uh, uh, in church, finally. Um, so you may have gathered that the, the government really has, has it is, everything is devolved to the local level, so all is now permitted officially. Uh, and the Church of England has done much the same. There are some official church guidelines that came out on Friday afternoon, but really that make, it puts all the onus on, on us, that is to say the, the incumbent with the PCC, on, on saying what we will do. So we will start singing again as a congregation next week. This was discussed at the PCC the other week, and make face masks optional. But we thought, therefore, we ought to still keep a little bit of social distancing. So these red, you know, these other, every other pew will still be roped up and we'll still encourage people to, to spread around the church. Uh, if you are wary of being too close to people who are distancing, of course, there, are, there usually are seats right at the edges or, or there is a lot of space up in the balcony if you can get upstairs. And if you want to keep away from the singers, then sitting up there uh, uh, should be okay for people. Otherwise, we will have our 8 o'clock service back every week uh, from now on. From next week, there'll be an 8 o'clock said communion, so no singing uh, and lots of distancing. So if you're uncertain about coming to this service, 8 o'clock will, uh, will be back on every week going forward. Um, in terms of communion, we have proposed keeping going with the current system for the time being. You are allowed to reintroduce a common chalice. I, we are not sure, I'm not sure there's going to be a great desire for that. Some people keep asking me, I've had about four or five people over the last couple of weeks, what about those little glasses? If you've been to a Methodist church, they all have separate glasses uh, or other free churches. Can't we do that? This was discussed about a year ago in the height of the lockdown. The powers that be in the Church of England have said this is against canon law. So they set up a commission, which will probably report back in 2023. Then there'll be an implementation committee, and then there'll be a process of consultation. So who knows? But anyway, um, I have been slightly tempted to write to the bishop and to ask, well, I know this is illegal, but can you tell me publicly or privately what, if any, action will be taken if churches do introduce this practice. I'm not sure it's a good idea, but it may be we were out of, without a chalice for, for months or even for years, who knows? So sooner or later, we'll have to think about that. However, for the time being, we'll carry on with uh, distributing at the steps here. I will carry on uh, with hand sanitizer. And in terms of sharing the peace, uh, again, we will have to, I think, leave that to you to, to exercise discretion. So if somebody clearly doesn't want to shake hands with you, uh, then do please carry on bowing. Somebody shook my hand, a friend of mine, I saw him last week, and he shook my hand, and it was quite odd. I mean, it was the first time I've done it for, a, I don't know, a year and a half. It was very strange experience, and I, I sort of came away thinking, I don't know, I mean, it felt a bit rude to sanitize immediately after, you know, <laughs> to sort of, but anyway. Um, so we, I think we will have to think, some people would be happy to do that, but if you're not happy, then please don't intrude on somebody else. Uh, and we'll, we can keep bowing uh, and nodding uh, if you feel happier with that. Coffee, I think we will restart, but just after the summer. There's no reason why not, really. But um, 
just people are away. So, so if you're happy to be on a coffee rotor, you will be handling cups at the end that other people have touched, I suppose. It's, there's a little bit of uncertainty, but uh, I think we can reintroduce that uh, in September. I hope that's reasonably clear. Do send, ask questions or send emails if there are things that we haven't quite worked out the details of. But uh, somebody sent me a link to St. Michael and All Angels, and we're basically doing the same. I mean, they're doing the same as us, so I felt that was helpful confirmation. That feels like a sensible way forward for the time being. Um, this week, uh, men's lunch is uh, on uh, Tuesday at the Cross Keys. Um, Pre-booking, or I don't think so. I think you. I, I, I'm afraid I, I put this notice on before. That, that notice is not correct. There are no restrictions, so I think we could just turn up. But at 12:30, uh, the storybook walk. I'm not sure whether that is active yet, but that's an activity for children. And uh, you'll see that the um, uh, concert at Holy Innocence next Sunday is also advertised. Is there anything else that I should advertise or draw attention to? Um, in which case, may I ask you to stand, please? The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.